Okay, so in our video series on step-by-step -step treatment of hypertension, in this video, we'll be talking about secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension is defined as hypertension, which is refractory to three medications, where one is a diuretic given at their maximum approved doses. When a patient is started on three antihypertensive medication, among three, one is a diuretic, but still the patient's blood pressure is not under control. That is called as secondary hypertension. Chronic kidney disease or end-stage renal disease is the most common cause of secondary hypertension. If chronic kidney disease is present, no workup for secondary hypertension is needed. What are the causes of secondary hypertension? The first one is hyperaldosteronism, also called as Korn syndrome, primary hyperaldosteronism. A tumor is secreting excess aldosterone and that excess aldosterone is causing sodium absorption and release of potassium in urine. That absorption of sodium leads to water retention, salt retention leading to refractory hypertension and loss of potassium leads, leads to hypokalemia. For the workup, you need to check aldosterone to renin ratio and aldosterone to renin ratio will be greater than 20. And you also may need to get CT pelvis to look for that aldosterone secreting tumor. Hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism can cause secondary hypertension. In history, you will find history of weight loss, excessive sweating, palpitation, and heat intolerance. For the workup of hyperthyroidism, you need to get thyroid profile, including TSH and free T4. Third cause, pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma is a tumor that releases epinephrine in the blood. That release of epinephrine, nor epinephrine, results in palpitation, perspiration, and increased sympathetic activity, leading to increased blood pressure. The four P's, pallor, palpitation, perspiration, and blood pressure. For the workup of pheochromocytoma, you need to get 24-hour urinary metanephrine. Urinary metanephrines are basically degradation product of norepinephrine, epinephrine, you check the metanephrine levels if they are elevated, that tells you about pheochromocytoma. You may need to get a CT scan to look for tumor in the adrenal glands. Fourth cause, aortic coarctation. Aortic coarctation is constriction of aorta when it rises out from the heart. In children, there will be history of warm hands and cold legs. Since the arteries to the hands arise from aorta before the constriction, so the blood supply to hands is intact and blood supply to hand is increased, leading to warm hands. And the blood supply to the legs arises after the constriction, so the blood supply to legs is low, leading to cold legs. In adults, you will find rib notching on x-ray and you will find BP difference, blood pressure difference in legs and arms. That is the hallmark of aortic coarctation. For the workup of aortic coarctation, you need to get x-ray of chest, angiogram and CT angiogram to, to find out that coarctation. Now, Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome is due to excess cortisol secretion. That excess cortisol secretion results in fluid retention leading to hypertension and central obesity, moon faces. For the workup, you need to get low dose dexamethasone suppression test, ACTH levels, high dose dexamethasone suppression test. I've talked about Cushing syndrome in detail in my video on Cushing syndrome. Obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is difficulty in breathing at night. That difficulty in breathing at night can be due to excessive fat in the neck or to, due to a big tongue that falls back onto the throat while the patient is sleeping. That, that is due to either obesity and you will find a history of daytime somnolence since these patients cannot sleep at night. So they are sleepy all the time during the day. And you need to get sleep study for the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. In obstructive sleep apnea, the sympathetic activity is high. That's high sympathetic activity leads to hypertension. Renovascular hypertension is a very important cause of secondary hypertension. In renovascular hypertension, the problem lies within the arteries that are supplying kidneys. When these arteries are thickened, when these arteries constrict, that leads to 
low blood flow and that low blood flow to the kidneys causes activation of renin angiotensin system that activation of renin angiotensin system causes release of angiotensin that increases blood pressure it causes release of aldosterone that increases salt retention now coming to the thickening of the vessel if the history is of a young woman then suspect fibromuscular dysplasia as a cause of thickening of blood vessel or if it is an old man in the history then suspect renal artery stenosis that led to thickening of vessel leading to decreased blood flow leading to renin angiotensin system activation and secondary hypertension for the workup you need to get aldosterone renin ratio and you need to get ultrasound of renal artery to look for the stenosis in summary we talked about secondary hypertension hypertension which is not controlled by three medications in which one is a diuretic at the maximum doses kid chronic kidney disease is the most common cause then we talked about hyperaldosteronism hyperthyroidism pheochromocytoma we talked about aortic coarctation cushing syndrome obstructive sleep apnea then at the end we talked about renovascular hypertension so this was secondary hypertension if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my videos on treatment of hypertension step by step thank you very much